It is fall. The leaves are changing color, the days are getting shorter, things are getting a little cooler, and honestly, I could not be more thrilled. I love fall. I love everything about fall. I love the smells, I love how everything changes, I love the crisp air, I love it all. And one of my favorite things about fall is it is time to harvest things from the garden. Full disclosure, my mom planted everything in this yard. I usually build the things and I eat the things. I do not plant the things. So everything you're seeing right now is courtesy of my mom. And so in celebration of her birthday, which is coming up in another week, I'm going to make her a harvest apron. Now, this is no pattern sewing. I am just doing this off of measurements of my body. First, I measured the width on my body of how much I wanted it to cover. Um, and then I'm cutting out a rectangle that is one and one half times that measurement across the front of my body. So if you had a measurement of 20 inches, you would cut out a rectangle that was 30 inches. As for the length, you want it to be able to fold um, and still have a fairly good pocket. So I would say anywhere below the knee, maybe like mid calf is probably going to be a good length for you. I'm going to use two coordinating fabrics for this. I'm just squaring up this purple stuff right now and I'm going to cut my pockets and my ties out of this purple. I'm cutting my ties at five inches wide with the intention of folding that five inch wide strip in half to do my ties. Now, I do need to cut two of these out, but then I remembered that I wanted to sew a pair of pants out of this fabric. So just to make sure that I was going to have enough, I had to stop and like lay out the pair of pants and pin it down to make sure I wasn't going to use too much of the fabric for this project. But because it's all in the name of being smart with my fabric and not wasting, um, I do not count that as procrastination. No, it had to be done. Okay, back to the project at hand. So after I rough cut out the pants, um, I was able to take a scrap from around that pattern and that is what I'm going to make into my pockets. Now you don't want your pockets to go more than halfway down your apron because then when you fold your apron, um, your pockets are going to get folded too. And the idea with these pockets is that if you're harvesting um, like smaller, more delicate things, like strawberries or tomatoes or raspberries or anything like that. You can put them in the pockets and then still fold up your apron and collect larger things as well and just keep them separate. So really your pocket size is going to depend on the size of your overall apron. I'm fairly tall, so is my mom, so we have big pockets. Make sure you leave yourself enough seam allowance to fold your outer edges over, I folded my top edge three quarters of an inch and my other three edges I folded a half an inch. So make sure you leave yourself that seam allowance. All right, so I have my main fabric, my two straps and my two pockets all cut out. Now I'm going to lay my straps right side together and I'm gonna sew them together. After I stitched those, I went and pressed my seam allowance open. You can see that here. And then while I was at the iron, I just folded it in half and pressed it again. Now I'm going to completely prep my ties and my pockets before I start working on the actual apron. So the next thing I'm going to do is use my tailor's ruler just to fold the outer edges in one more time. So I'm effectively making a really big piece of bias tape. So I have my top uh, fold marked out at half an inch and I'm just reducing that by um, an eighth of an inch for the other side. So I have half inch on one side and three eighths of an inch on the other side. That way when I fold it, I have one that's going to stick out a little bit more. And so that's just to help if I'm stitching right close to the edge on my top side, um, that just allows a little bit more space at the bottom so that I don't accidentally miss the other side of my strap. So you can see there's just sort of like a little wee lip on the bottom edge there. So um, it'll just make it sew together a little bit more securely and I won't have to worry about is everything lining up exactly because I sort of have that extra eighth of an inch of grace on the back side of my apron. So I'm going to carry on pinning all that and then I will press that. All right, the next step in getting these ties ready is to close up the ends. So I'm just going to fold those wrong side out and I'm going to stitch the end closed. Now that that's all stitched together, I'm going to clip my corners and trim my seam allowance. And there, 
that folds out really nice. All right, now let's deal with the pocket. So, so first on my top edge, I'm gonna fold that over a quarter of an inch and I'm gonna pin it because it's just gonna make it so much easier to press it. So if you are pinning, remember that um, you're gonna want glass ball beads on your pins if you're gonna press over top of them. So I'm only doing this quarter of an inch on the top edge. Now that I've got those pressed, I'm gonna pull those pins out. This fabric holds a crease really, really well, so that's a nice thing to work with. Now I'm going to reset my tailor's ruler to a half an inch, and I'm gonna fold that down again. All right, now the top edge of my pocket is done, I'm going to go and stitch those before I fold everything else over. Now that that's stitched, I'm going to fold over my other three edges by half an inch, so I have these all pinned, I'm gonna press them and I'm gonna put them off to the side. Now, if I had a pattern, I would put it on my main fabric right away because it would be easier to fix these on before I pleat the fabric, but because I'm working without a pattern, I don't know kind of where everything's gonna wind up once my fabric is pleated. So it seems a little counterintuitive, but I'm actually not gonna put these on until after I've pleated my top. All right, so all my purple stuff is prepped. Time to work on the main piece here. First, I need to take care of my sides, so I'm just gonna use my rolled hem foot, if I can find it, and I'm gonna use that to finish my two side edges. Oh, there it is. Okay, so my two sides are all rolled, nice and tidy. Now I'm going to do the bottom edge. And I want my bottom edge to be hemmed a little bit wider than um, the width of my buttons. So just like the top of my pockets, I'm gonna fold the bottom edge at a quarter inch and press it. All right, now before I can decide what my hem is, I need to know what buttons I'm going to use because I want my hem to be a little bit wider than the full width of the buttons that I'm going to use because I'm going to have my button holes on the hem and there's buttons to play with, so naturally little hands have to make their way to the work table. Okay, so I found three buttons, that's all I needed, and my helping hand here is gonna help me clean up the rest of them. I honestly can't remember what the width of that button was, I think it was a three quarter inch button, and so I made my bottom hem about an inch. So I'm just gonna fold that hem up, I'll give it a press, and then I will use my edge stitch foot to stitch that down. Don't worry if you don't have an edge stitch foot, that's just me being persnickety. You use whatever foot you've got. Okay, time for buttonholes. <laughs> I'm gonna put one on either end and then one right in the middle. Buttonholes are done, time to open them up. I always like to put a pin at one end of my buttonhole. That way when I push my seam ripper through, I don't accidentally go through the end of my buttonhole. And this fabric is sturdy. <laughs> All right, next I need to pleat the top. So I'm just marking where my center is. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a box pleat in the center and then knife pleats going out from either side. If you really want, you can just throw a basting stitch in and gather it. But this fabric is almost like a canvas, it's quite thick, and I feel like gathering it would just make it too bulky. And I'm just using my tailor's ruler as something to wrap around there. I feel like pleating is its own thing. If you would like a more comprehensive tutorial on how to space out pleats, how to do pleats or whatever, let me know in the comments below. And I'm just gonna stick a few box pleats on either side now until I get to my desired width. It's really important to have the top narrower than the bottom for this because you want to easily be able to get your hands and your produce in and out of your pockets that you're going to create when you fold the bottom up. All right, double check my width there and that looks good. So now I'm just going to repeat the pleats on the other side. Okay, she's plated. I'm just going to go and run a basting stitch now to hold all those pleats in place. Now it's time to put our waistband on. So I have that center seam where I put the two pieces together. I'm just gonna line that up with the center of my box pleat. And I'm gonna pin this whole shebang together. Now I'm gonna go stitch all the way across those pleats and all the way down the ties as well. 
All right, now it's time to place the pocket. So I'm using my measuring tape to mark the height of where I want the pocket to sit. And I'm putting the pocket sort of so that it lines up with that first knife pleat um, outside of the box pleat. But after I just sort of pop a few pins in here to kind of get the position, then I just use my measuring tape to check what the distance is between the edge of the pocket and the side of my apron. And then I'll make sure it's the same on the other side. And then I just replace those same pins that I'm using to hold my folded edge down and fix it to the apron. All right, so both of my pockets are pinned on. Now I just have to stitch them on. And here I have my pockets all stitched on. First, I went around with my edge stitch foot and then I put my regular foot on and I did a second row of stitching just to give the pockets a lot of stability. All right, last thing, I need to put my buttons on. So you can see I have my center one already sewn on and my other ones, I'm doing about three inches away. Um, this is sort of by guess and by golly, but you really want them to be closer to the middle rather than putting your buttons on the edges um, because that brings the sides up a little bit into a real pocket shape and then you won't have things sort of falling out the sides. I am using some silk twist just for extra strength. Use whatever thread you have. Um, just try and make sure that you have a good amount of stitching in there. I am so happy with how this turned out. Um, I love the design that I went with. There's a lot of different ways to make these. Some with drawstrings, some with ties in the front. Um, I really like the buttons and I love that it still folds out into just a really nice kitchen apron and it's easy to shake all the dirt out of it. Well, there we go. That's my super easy, no pattern sewing harvest apron. And you know what? If you're not a gardener, this is the perfect gift for a gardener. In fact, this is my mom's birthday present. So mom, I hope you don't watch this because birthday's not till next week. Act surprised, okay? That's all I've got for you this week. Thank you so much for joining me. And I hope that you were inspired to go and sew your own harvest apron. See you next week. Yeah, that's a saw. That's a saw that's going right now. There's a bus. That's why I don't film outside. <laughs>